Hello, in this lecture we will discuss the general ledger. We will be able to define what the general ledger is, describe how the general ledger can be used in accounting software, explain the process of posting to the general ledger, and explain the relationship between the general ledger and the trial balance. Alright, so the general ledger defined the primary ledger, which contains all the balance sheet and income statement accounts. So here we have our trial balance that we have been working with, and we have all of our accounts here on the trial balance. We've got the balances in the trial balance. Now we can think of the general ledger in two ways. We can think about it as the tool that we use to build the trial balance. That's how we're going to think about it when we do things by hand. When we look at the software, we can also think about it as the backup by date of each account. So if we take a look at the end product here, we're, we're taking a look at the trial balance that was created through uh, the general ledgers, through the creation of general ledgers. We can think about it as what if we wanted to see the detail of each of these accounts, we would look at the general ledger, which would list the detail. How did we get to this number? Well, we can look at the general ledger and see it by date. We can see the date of the transaction that affected cash. We can see the dates of the transactions, each transaction that affected accounts receivable. And we can do that for each of these accounts. So we can go back in time and look at the history of what happened in order to get to this ending balance number. So if we were taking a look at software, just to give an idea, bringing in software, this is a QuickBooks account, and we're looking at a balance sheet generated from QuickBooks. We can see that total assets equal total liabilities and stockholders' equity. And if we wanted to see something like, what about some more detail in terms of this cash account? How did we get to this cash account? We could drill down on that and look at a, an account that would be similar to a general ledger. So it would look something like this. QuickBooks calls it a transaction by account. It's going to be similar to a uh, general ledger type account. And you can see that we have the transactions that are in order by date. And this gives us some more detail th than that. It, it gives us the type of account, the number. But we're in concerned with the fact that it shows us what happens in order by date. And then it has basically a T account here. We see our T account and we see our debits and our credits. And then it gives us our running balance. So here's the balance that we saw on the balance sheet. Here's the history of it by date. We debited it. It increased. It's a cash account. Then we credited it. It decreased, decreased and so on. So that's how it would look in one form of software. And if we took a look at, if we drilled down on that, if we exported that and looked at it in this format in terms of an Excel sheet, once again, it's a T account. We're looking at our T and now we're looking at this T account in terms of one particular account rather than a T for all of the accounts. So the trial balance was a T account for all accounts showing the balances, showing that the total debits equal the total credits. When we look at each individual account, the debits and credits will not be equal for each individual account because we're going to see that one account will, one side will be winning depending on the type of transaction. So let's take a look at that. For example, cash. Cash is an asset. Uh, we'll have a similar type of, of format for all assets. Remember that assets have a debit balance represented by the fact that it doesn't have brackets here. And what that means is that if we add up all of the debits and credits, the debits will always win. In cash, we know it's the debits will win. So if we're taking a race between the debits and the credits and we're betting on the winner the debits are always going to win in an asset account that means that if we have a debit balance here and we debit it such as this transaction got posted here we're not seeing the other side which got posted to the sales we see this get posted here and we're going to say well what's that do to a debit balance well we did the same thing to it that balance is going to go up to here then we posted this one from this journal entry we're only seeing the cash half of it that's a credit well, this is a debit. That's the opposite, which is a credit, which brings it down to our running balance here. And then we did this transaction, another credit. Notice there's going to be more credits than debits in cash because we usually write more checks than we receive uh, in deposits. But hopefully the deposits are larger in size, which means that the debits will, will win. So once again, we have a credit. There's a debit. That's the opposite credit. And then we have the cash here. This is a debit bounce account. That's the opposite, making it go down. So the debits will always win. If we added up all the debits from the history of the cash account and all the credits and we subtracted them out, the debits would be winning by uh, 613940. That's the amount that's reported on the trial balance. Now you might be saying, well, it's possible that the credits could win. What if I wrote a check for you know $700,000? Then the credits would be beating the debits, right? That would flip the sign. And that could happen. What if that, we, what, that would mean that we overdrew the account? And if that happened, is it really an asset anymore? Even though it's our checking account, no, it's a liability. It flips to a liability. We owe that money back. So if the credits win in the checking account, 
That means we have no checking account. That means we have an overdrawn account, which is a liability. So if we take a look at that in terms of the general ledger as a whole, what we're saying is that account that we just looked at in terms of all the accounts is part of is what builds the trial balance. That ending balance is the trial balance. We can see that we have a, a similar GL account for every account, which would show the detail. So we can see the detail here of the accounts receivable being this number. We can see the 12 here. We can see this here. So we have the same type of detail for each account. We're concentrating on cash in this case. If we took a look at the accounts receivable, same type of thing. Accounts receivable is an asset. Assets go up with a debit. So we debited it here. Increasing. That's a debit. That's a debit. Increasing it. That's when an invoice went out. We sent an invoice out. Increasing the receivable. Then we got paid. So now we're decreasing the receivable. That's what's always going to happen in the receivable account. Debits are always going to win. Either people owe us money or nobody owes us money. The receivable doesn't go negative. It doesn't represent us owing other people money, right? So we have sent an invoice. We got paid. And then uh, it looks like we got uh, we sent an invoice out here, debiting it, making it go up to 59. And then we sent another invoice here, debiting it, making it go up to 91. Uh, and then it looks like we got paid here, 27. And we should be able to match these up in the receivables. Note, we got we sent an invoice, we got paid. We sent an invoice, we got paid. That's how the receivables will generally work. Um, and if we looked at that in context, once again, now we're looking at the receivable account. We're concentrating here. We can see that 64,000 here. That shows the backup of the number on the trial balance, just as it would for you know all the other accounts on the trial balance in this example. So general ledger for accounts payable. Now let's look at a liability. We can see it's a liability. It has a credit balance represented by the brackets here. We're looking at a payable, which represents that we owe someone else money. We bought something, owe someone else money. So we have the kind of the reverse of what would happen with the receivable, meaning that it has a credit balance represented by the brackets. We bought supplies in this case. Now we owe more money. That's a credit. This is a credit. It makes the credit go up. Then it looks like we paid the supplies. So now we debit it. That's a credit. That's a debit. It makes it go down. And then we uh, accounts payable went up again. We bought auto service. That's a credit. That's a credit goes up. This is a credit. This is a credit goes up. And then it looks like we paid off the balance again. We paid off kind of like paying off a credit card balance. That's a debit. That's a credit. It makes it go down. That's what's going to happen in accounts payable. We're going to charge here and then we're going to pay it. Then we're going to charge and then we're going to pay it. Might not happen uh, in sequential order like that, but we should be able to tick and tie out the debits and the credits in that way. If we looked at this in terms of the context of the chart of accounts, we're looking at accounts payable here, concentrated on that liability. Here's the detail of that account that we just looked at. Here's the ending balance that makes up that number. If we want to look at the detail, we look over here, we can see it by date of transaction or by order of transaction in history and time. So then we are now able to define the general ledger, describe how the general ledger can be used in accounting software, explain the process of posting to the general ledger, and explain the relationship between the general ledger and the trial balance.